Good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about the ins and outs, so digital ins, analog ins for robotics, so we can talk to either an end of arm tooling or we can talk to a PLC, which is a programmable logic controller. So on the screen right now I have the 2000 IC robot with a end of arm tooling, which is a bunch of suctions, so it could have some electronic solenoids. I will definitely have some pneumatic and vacuum pneumatics to it. I also have on screen a PLC setup in which we can interface between the robot. So if I hit start here, it will actually start the robot, or if I turn on the, say, a laser, or I can turn on another tool or I can end the actual program itself. So there's multiple things we can interface with a control panel or other sensors to an actual robot. So when it actually comes to the ins and outs of the FANUC robotics, we have a couple different ones that we can utilize like the user operating panel or the standard operating panel, which is part of the actual panel or the main processor itself. Um, these are the ones that we're going to be utilizing the most, which is the robot I.O., which is ins and outs, digital I.O., group I.O., and analog I.O., and each one of these have a different heading, so robot is going to be R, so we have robot in, robot out, digital in, digital out, group in, group out, and analog in, analog out. So each one of these have a different heading, and we can send signals or we can receive signals. So the first type is going to be the robot in and out. So this is going to be an actual device that is going to be incorporated into the arm itself. And depending on what type of arm you have, you may have a multitude of digital inputs and outputs or just a few. And these inputs and outputs are going to be a standard PLC voltage. Again, PLC stands for Programmable Logic Controller, which is 24 volts. And that's what most sensors in industry work on. So where these ins and outs are located, for example, the LRMA 200 ID, which most classrooms have, or small industrial purposes. So right here is a group of pneumatic solenoids, so we can have pneumatics coming from our robot. But right here is a connector in which we have a pinout for digital ins, digitals outs, for a cord to go to the end effector. So here's a pinout, and based on the pins will tell us whether it is a digital in or digital out and then that gets connected to the end effector. So you can see here we have the end effector here, whether it's a grabbing device with some pneumatics and going up through the cords, we have some pneumatic hookups and we also have the electrical and sensor hookups for the actual end effector. Digital ins and outs are gonna be part of the actual controller itself. So there's gonna be a card or add-on to the inside of the CPU inside the box that you will have a bunch of digitals, outs, or ins. So these are just electrical signals sent out. It's either yes, there's electricity is present, or no electricity present. So with all the other digital inputs and outputs and analogs, we can actually group these so that it makes programming a little bit easier. And we'll, again, we'll talk a little bit about this later on, but it has to do with a binary signal, and we can set a group of 16 bits to control 16 different inputs or outputs. Now because not everything is a yes or no answer, we do have some analog inputs and outputs, and this is based on, again, a typical PLC, a programmable logic controller, which is based on between zero volts and 10 volts. So any voltage in between there, we can read that and we can associate that with a number. So examples of analog devices would be a potentiometer or a volume control or sensing what color an object is or the weight of an object. Now, depending on what type of robotic model you have, if you have a large case for your controller or a large industrial robot, you're going to have a larger case in which you're going to have more ins and outs for the cell. So this is typically if you open up that case in which your CPU is housed and all your controls, you will see something that looks much like this. This is called a Model A discrete in and out. So this one has a multitude of items you can add on. So as you build your cell, you can add on or you can subtract. So you can do as many as you need and as little as you need. And you can switch it between analog or digital outputs on the actual 
device. There are smaller devices that are out there for smaller cases, for example the Model B, or for even smaller devices like the LR Mate, uh, you will have an actual board inside the actual CPU in which you'll connect a connector much like this to your ins and outs, or if you have the software to enable it, you can actually have an in and out talking to a PLC or something else or a computer through the Ethernet port. So let's go on the Teach Pennant and locate these ins and outs. If you do not have an in and out quick key down below, you can go to menu number five, which is in and out, and we can go to any of these items. So there's digital, analog, group, robot, and then your user panel and stop panels. So then we're going to go to, let's go to digital, and here is the digital ins and outs. So if I go shift and then down, you'll see we have a multitude of different outputs we can have for this robot. Now this is a larger robot, which will have a larger case, so we would actually use the type A configuration for our digital outs, ins, and also analogs. Okay, so there's multitude of different things we can now set up. So I'm going to go back down to the beginning. Okay. So right now this is digital out. So if we switch it to the in, here's digital in. So basically the difference is in digital out, the robot CPU is sending a electrical signal out to something, whether it is a PLC or the actual robot itself. Digital in is it's reading a digital signal. So example would be if we have a push button and we push a button and then it reads a electrical signal and then we can say this push button controls the start of our actual robot. So there are ins and outs. So if you go to type, here are the different types we can swap to. So example, we can go to analog. So here's our analogs, groups, here's our groups, and then robot. So here's our robots. And notice we only have so many robot ins and outs um, for this particular model. So this particular model has eight outputs and then also eight inputs. And if we go back to our digital and let's go back to digital out, let's go to configure. And what configure brings up is this little screen that says our digital out range, rack, slot, start, and then whether it's active or unassigned. Now this is a very important thing because you have to set this up in order for your digital ins and digital outs to work. So let's go through how to set this up step by step for this particular robot. And the rest of the robots that are out there is very similar. You just have to make sure you use the correct rack number. So the CPU needs to be able to search for these ins and outs signals. And we have to set that up. So the first part of that address is known as the rack. So basically if you picture the rack as what state is your address in the United States. So we're going to start out broad and then we're going to narrow down to the individual ports much like how an address does on an actual mailing of a letter. Depending on what type of setup you have, for example the my larger robot that I had in the previous screen is a Model A type rack so we're going to start out with rack number one. Now, depending on what type of setup you have, may have different racks. For example, for schools, you're going to be using a LR Mate controller, which uses rack number 48. So instead of going rack number one, you would see number 48. If you're using a Ethernet port, you're going to be using rack number 89. So setting this up, right here we have the individual rack, so this is just a connection in which we have additions we can add on. And we'll talk about what these are in a minute. So the rack here is our add-on part. We can have multiple racks, rack 1, rack 2, rack 3, depending on how many ins and outs are actually needed. So the second part of that address slot will be considered what zip code within that state are going to be. Okay, And we can have a multitude of different slots, so you can have additional slots. Looking at our picture, from our connection, we have slot 1 and slot 2 is being used on this rack. So this rack can hold up to five different slots. So if you want any more than that, then you need to go to rack number 2. So if I'm looking at rack number 1, going to slot number 1, and then we will move down to the individual parts. So now we're in the particular address. So with starting points, that's going to be our digital signals, and then channels are going to be analog signals. So coming down from rack number one, slot number one, 
opening that up we have our specific channels if it's analog or starting point if it's digital so you can see we have two separate areas here so this is going to be from 0 to 7 because everything in computers we actually index from 0 so it technically has eight different spots then we have another portion down here where we have a starting position of 0 through 7 makes eight positions again as well so this has a total of 16 outputs or inputs. So if we compare it to our screen where we have digital 1 through digital 8, digital 9 through digital 16, notice how we have the range 1 through 8, 9 through 16, and then we have a rack, slot, and starting point of those. So depending on whether you have digital ins or outs, we may have a separate slot for ins, a separate slot for the outs, or you can have one set as it's going to be your ins, one set's going to be your outs. So it all depends on how you set it up and how you actually wire. So for our actual robot, we're going to say that we're going to have one rack with two slots. So one slot we're going to utilize for our digital ins and one slot we're going to utilize for our digital outs. Okay, so let's go in here and let's start modifying our digital ins and outs. So we're going to say digital in 1 through 16 is going to be part of slot number 1. So let's go in here and add our rack. So we're going to go 1, enter, and then 1, enter. So both of these digital outs are going to be on rack number 1. And we'll say slot number 1. So if this is not in slot number 1, let's go 1 and then go down 1. And notice how it's saying pending here. Now pending means you need to do a cold restart or restart on your teach pendant or the actual robot itself in order for it to take effect. Okay. So now our digital outputs here, we're going to start, right now it says 21, we're going to start at 1. And then from here, digital output, we're going to start at 9. Now, the reason why you saw those numbers is because you can have a digital out and a digital in on the same slot. Okay, so in order to do that, how to switch between, you would do rack number 1, slot number 1, starting point would be 1 here. And then for your digital in, it will be rack number 1, slot number 1, and it would start at 9. Okay, so depending on how you group things together, that's how you would actually change the starting points on this. Because we're going to have our digital ins on slot number one, we don't have to worry about that. It just makes things a little bit easier. But if you're kind of pressed for the amount of space or you don't need to have two different slots, then you're going to have to make sure that you're ch changing the starting points so that it matches the actual slot itself. So now that I have our, our digital out, one through eight, nine through 16, uh, as our slot number one, starting point number one, and then start point nine number nine, and this goes nine through 16. I don't have to worry about the rest of them. I'm only setting up these. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the digital in. So here's our digital in. We're going to still use the same rack. So rack number one for our digital ins. We're going to use slot number two. So we're using a different device in slot number two. And then now we can do the starting point as number one. And then our digital end here is going to be nine. So now in order for this to take effect, we need to do a cold restart of our actual device. On RoboGuide, there's a restart here. So cold start. So if I click that, do you want to do a cold restart? Yes. So it's going to reinitialize everything. It's going to save all the variables that we just did. There we go. So it's reinitializing. I'm going to go back to my ins and outs. Type digital. There we go. Go to configure. And notice how it now says active with the correct rack, correct slot, and correct starting position. Now the rest of these are active, but will not work because the rack assignment is not correct. Okay, now, if you want to, in RoboGuide, I do not suggest doing this on an actual robot itself, we can actually delete the ones that we are not going to use. For example, if I know that this robot is going to be continuously only digital out from 1 through 16 and not more, we can delete these. So I can go delete, clear assignment, yes. So I can delete the ones that I'm not using. Again, be extremely careful about doing this because you could be deleting certain things that you need maybe possibly later on. I am only doing this because this is RoboGuide software and for me to just start a whole new 
sell because I messed up doesn't make a difference. Okay, so now you'll see these assignments are clear. So watch what happens when I have these assignments as clear. If I go back to monitor, notice how we only have digital outputs for 1 through 20 instead of all of them. Okay, so all of them instead from DOM 1 through 20. So if I go back in here, let's go into our inputs now and do the same thing. So we have digital inputs. We have rack number 2. So let's get rid of some of these items that are not being used. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of my ins and outs here. And now I'm just cleaned that up so that's from 17 to 512 is unassigned and we just have 1 through 16. Again, be extremely careful about deleting these in actual robotic scenarios unless you know exactly what you are doing and prepared for uh, if you need to bring back things because it is a lot more difficult to bring things back than it is just to keep them. Okay, again, I'm doing this because we are in a software based program and it's very easy to shut down this cell and just open up a brand new one. So just like before, we only have our digital inputs from one through so many. So now we have our digital inputs and our digital outputs. So pulling up my user panel here. And we'll say that right now this is hooked up to a PLC, which it actually is. Um, it is not hooked up to the actual robot. So I'm going to just simulate this as if it was actually hooked up to my software. So pulling up my digital outputs, an output would be anything to send a signal out or voltage out. So example would be if I want to turn on the red light, the yellow light, the green light, or blue indicator lights. So these are going to be digital outs where I can send electrical signal to a light, possibly to another PLC or to the robot saying, hey, let's turn on this end effector tool or turn on this pneumatic device. So anything to control or turn something on will be considered a digital output, whereas the digital inputs are going to be receiving signals. So that's going to be any of these switches where we would receive a signal yes it's swapped no it's not yes I'm pressed no it's not yes I'm turned no it's not so those will be our digital signals so example would be if I turn my signal right here as a digital in that would possibly turn on a laser so it turns on the laser or we can set it up to turn on the laser on the actual uh, robot for maybe configuring something or to turn on the light on the robot or to turn on some sort of end effector. Okay, so we can have a PLC communicate with the robot via an Ethernet cable or direct inputs and outputs of the actual robot. Just like this picture right here, we would have a actual physical wire coming from the actual robot box going out and into our programmable logic controller. So let's do some programming. So we'll just go in here and we're going to name it. So I'm going to go arrow over and I'm going to go detail and we can name it. So let's call this green push buttons. Keyboard, keyboard. And we call this green push button. And you can actually give the input or output for it. So here's the polarity. Normal means if I press it, it's going to turn to yes. If I decompress it, it'll be no. So yes, no. That is normal polarity. Let's go back, so previous, so now we have green push button, so let's go digital 2 as our red push button, so let's go down here, and then we can go to our detail again, so we can name it, and I'm going to call this red push button, okay, and red push button means again, uh, if you look at this, the light is actually on, so if I press it, this has a opposite polarity, so this is a normally closed device, whereas this is a normally open device, normally open means uh, in its normal state that there's no electricity going through and then when I press it there's electricity going through this is a normally closed state so that means with it decompressed electricity is flowing through and as soon as I press it electricity is not flowing through anymore so we're going to switch the polarity of this to inverse so again we're going to have to do a power off and power on to enable the changes when we do this polarity uh, device so I'm going to cold start our device and then I'll come back to this point right here. 
So I did a cold start, so it initialized it. So notice now the status is on. So if I keep adding here, so digital in, detail number three, I can call this one laser on off. And then the last one will say, this is going to be the cycle gripper. So I can open and close the gripper based on an actual switch on a PLC. So I don't have to keep uh, trying to turn on and off the gripper via the digital outputs. So I can go detail and I'm going to go inside here under comment. I'm going to go gripper. Go. Previous brings us back. So now we have our four button setups so we can simulate again this could be my laser which is the red light and this can be my gripper so gripper open gripper closed and then we can have that as our end or emergency stop and then we can have this as our start point so from these digital signals goes to our programmable logic controller so here is our siemens programmable logic controller everything's hooked up to that and we could have an ethernet cord going to the actual robotic software or the actual robot and then that will send the digital outs and ins between the plc and also the robot so the next item we're going to set up is the digital out so when we go switch between the outs and ins so here's my digital out so my digital out can be a sending a signal to the PLC that I'm in position or I'm ready to pick up or status is a go. So we can do a digital output here. So I'm going to go in here and we go detail and I'm going to go maybe robot ready. So then I can send a signal, a yes or no signal to the PLC saying that everything is ready so if I have maybe something that needs to happen here where if I press the green push button and the robot's not ready then nothing will happen so I can program the PLC properly so that this will work so I can utilize the software and instead of saying the red push button is going to turn on the orange light I can say red push button and a digital input from the actual robot turns on the red light so we can now program our digital outs digital ins we can also do an analog device where we can do a changing of an object or whether we have a piece of metal there or not or how far or a proximity different sensor how far we are from the actual device uh, so we can set up all different digital outs digital ins to communicate to different devices and next video we're going to actually start programming with the digital outs and digital in saying that if i actually press this button then something will happen